Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next actual lesson. My lesson on flowcharts is usually a little bit of a short one, but let's do it anyway. You can make flowcharts anywhere you like, of course, Miro, Visio, whatever era you live in, there's always something that uh, will build flowcharts. But I want to just take a minute and show a couple of neat things about Actures flowcharting. Now, if, for example, we came in here and we said generate flow diagram, um, uh, let's say I say standard, and boom. Now I've got this. Now, how did Axure make this and why? Because Axure understood that there's a version 1.0, a page one, and a special page. If I go to page one and I go to interactions and down here in properties, you will see reference page, page one. Now, the version one has that, but that's a little strange because technically it's a folder. But the idea here is that you could create very quickly a flow chart based on what you've set up as your hierarchy here in the pages. And not only that, but this would be clickable because Axure understands that if someone clicks on page one, this should go to page one. If we changed this, we'd probably want to change the reference page, but there you go. You can make quickie diagrams or we can go into our flowchart library and we can make a flowchart the old fashioned way. Um, however you like, I might not use some of these shapes, uh, the way you might, or the right way. Let's start with a circle for like a starting point. And so I could say uh, start, and again, the start could be absolutely anything. And then maybe the user sees a certain page. Now I could even drag out page one. I could say from the start, people go to page one. And again, now this is even a clickable flow chart because it will follow the pages uh, in Axure. Now I'm not gonna put in the connectors yet. Let's put in some shapes and then I'll show you how the connectors work. Let's imagine we then have a decision point where uh, there could be a yes or no answer. Maybe are they logged in or not? Or is this a new customer or not? And then let's say there's two possible outcomes after that based on whatever the correct answer is because that's how flowcharts work. They've got branches. So let's say I've got that. And uh, now let's start joining these up. And we can do that up here, top left with the connector uh, cursor type. And all you need to do is when you hover over, a shape, hover over a shape, you will see there are places where you can start and end points. And it's best to use those because then as you move an item around, Axure will keep that connection. Let's press undo and undo again. If I do not go from a connection point and I do some weird stuff, like I try to link it up over to this corner, then when I move this, Axure goes, yeah, I, I didn't get it. I didn't see that you were trying to connect these two things. So in general, you want to go from X point to X point, and that way you have that connection. Now, why does the arrow look like this? Because that's what's going on in our styles. It's two pixels thick, it's mustard colored, it's a solid line, 
and these are the arrow styles. Now you have to manually change your arrow styles from here. Unfortunately, they are not in global widget styles, which makes me grumpy. But we could say that the beginning point is an open square and the end point is a giant arrow. And now that's how this looks. So uh, you might be thinking, hey, global widget styles, Deb. Yes and no. When I go into global widget styles, I can certainly change the color, the thickness, some of the other things on here, but you'll notice there's nothing here that says arrowheads. Sadly, sadly, that has not been brought into global widget styles as of when I'm filming this. Hopefully it will be when you're watching this, but if you don't see it here, you're going to have to do those manually. Now, the neat thing is that I can make multiple widget styles if I would like. I could say uh, dotted connector because maybe some of our relationships in our flowchart are connected and maybe we uh, envision some of them as more of a dotted relationship. So I could say border pattern and I could pick one of these dots. Maybe I also change the color so that things that have that relationship have a different color. Okay, and I can click on the arrows that I want. So let's say this goes here. Oh, I'll need to line that up a little bit. Mm, for you, ah, for you pixel perfect people, you'll just have to cry a little. And I can bring this one here and I can bring this one here. Now I could say that there is a dotted relationship here and I could, uh, with this arrow selected, I could go to my widget styles from here or from the style pane. And I could say this one is the dotted connector. Now, because of the style of dots I saw, that's a little hard to see. That one's not going to be easy to see um, with a short line, but I can go back in and change it if I'm not happy with that. I could say connect, this was dotted connector. So let's take a look and I can watch it as I change it. How about that? That could be better. Maybe you like that one. Totally up to you. This is your choice and your style. And of course, we also have options in how things curve around. So here I can say, let's see, it's when I click on the line, it's not on the shape, actually gives me some choices. Do I want right angles? Do I want curvy angles? Do I just want a straight line from here to there? Do I want a curvy line from here to there? So you can make that flow chart look however you want. And you can see there are some grab handles here where I can say, well, I want this to look like this. So you can adjust those lines the way you like for the way this flow chart is coming together. Totally up to you. Um, that's pretty silly looking. Now, also notice that on these lines, you can type stuff. So maybe this is the no choice and maybe this is the yes choice. How would you change those fonts? Again, it was up there in our global widget styles. So if we take a look at flow shape or connector or dotted connector, I've got Nunito font at 20. And again, you can make that whatever you like. You can make that absolutely anything and that will change the words that are on the uh, connectors. So that's pretty much it. Now, again, all of these flow shapes should work. You can uh, use them as you like. You can bring in other shapes if you want. You can bring in images if you want, you know, Im images down here. Um, but this would be the way to go if you are building some sort of flow chart. That's usually all I show other than, don't forget, global widget styles for everything. Hypothetically, you could manually style it so that diamonds are yellow or of course you could build a global style for each of the different shapes or colors or whatever and apply those styles. So remember you can go global widget styles wild with this if you'd like. See you in the next video.